The government's push for 20% ethanol blended petrol. India has introduced E20 petrol, adding 20% ethanol nationwide. Uh, there have been some concerns regarding implementation of E20 program. Uh, so clearly, you know, when you mix two, uh, the chemical energy in that new fuel will obviously be less. E20 fuel has saved India 1.06 trillion rupees in oil import costs between 2014 to 2024. Or E20 has ignored ignited a fierce debate. E20 fuel is here, which is 20% ethanol mixed with petrol, and it's been rolled out across India. But bikers and car owners are panicking. Will my mileage drop? Will my engine wear out faster? Will I have to modify my bike or car to meet these standards? Let's break this down with facts and not fears, so you can make an informed decision by watching this video. Hi everyone, I am Arun and welcome back to Archeonics. Today, we'll go deep into what E20 really is, why the government is doing this, how it affects fuel efficiency, possible engine wear and tear, what you should do to protect your vehicle. By end of this video, you will know exactly whether you should be worried or just ride on. E20 standard stands for, for every 100% fuel that you put into your vehicle, it has 20% ethanol mixed with 80% petrol. Ethanol is an alcohol made from sugarcane, corn or biomass and it is a renewable fuel. From past many decades, government is importing the crude oil from different countries. Now as the cost of import is very high, our Indian government has to do something about to keep the cost in check. Now by this E20 standards, the government's goal is to reduce the crude oil imports, cut CO2 emissions and also support farmers. India started with E5 years ago, then E10 and now we are completely moving to E20. And in future, we might even upgrade or even downgrade to E40 or E60 standards. There may be a time we might be switching to 100% ethanol and completely stop crude oil imports. Now let's understand the technical background on ethanol. Ethanol has a higher octane rating but lower energy content per litre. This means better anti-knock properties but slightly lower fuel economy. Earlier while we were running on E5 fuel, you might have noticed this on higher compression engines that when you put a regular petrol, it might knock a bit and when you upgrade it to a power or premium fuels which has been provided by multiple suppliers, with a higher octane rating, your knocking issue must have come down. Same with ethanol, since it has higher octane rating, you will have less knocking issues on every higher compression engines. However, since it has lower energy content per litre, it produces less power for the amount of fuel that is getting injected onto your cylinders. To simplify it even more further, think of ethanol as having fewer calories per litre. So, your bike has to burn a bit more to produce the same power. Ethanol is hydroscopic in nature, which means it absorbs water from the air. If your bike sits for a week with E20 in the tank, moisture can actually build up and cause corrosion. It also can rust your tank if actually your fuel tank is made of metal. However, before panicking, this was actually an issue which we were having already with E5 fuel also. Now, since the ethanol concentration is higher with 20%, this corrosion will happen on a faster phase compared to E5 fuels. Now, how does this E20 compliant petrols actually affect your fuel efficiency? You can expect anywhere between 5 to 10% lower mileage if your engine is not tuned for ethanol. Carbureted bikes, especially older ones, may feel rough at idling or hesitate on throttle. Fuel injected BS6 bikes are just automatically, so the impact is smaller. For cars, modern petrol cars handle it just fine. But older cars may slow slightly and also mileage drop can be experienced and also can have issues with cold start. E20 fuel won't immediately damage your engine. The changes can be gradual and the manufacturers have upgraded the fuel lines, pumps and even fuel injectors to be ethanol resistant. Rubber seals, fuel pipes and o-rings can actually degrade faster with ethanol if they are not ethanol compliant. Ethanol can also loosen dirt in fuel tanks leading to clogged filters. 
The solution is to use good quality filters and replace all the fuel filters on the scheduled time without fail. If you park your bike for weeks, use a fuel stabilizer to avoid moisture related problems and also make sure that you completely fill the tank to avoid rust formation in the fuel tank. All the major two-wheeler brands like Bajaj, Hero, TVS and even Honda have started rolling out E20 compliant models since 2023. Cars from Maruti, Hyundai, Tata are gradually being certified for E20 fuels. Check the sticker near your fuel cap or its owner's manual. It often mentions E20 compatibility. Now here are some tips for riders and car owners to keep in mind. Keep your fuel tank filled if you're going to store your vehicle for longer periods. Regularly service the fueling system including the filter, pump and injectors. Use fuel system cleaners while you service your motorcycle or car. It would be a best option to consider to use fuel system cleaners every few thousand kilometers. Don't mix random additives unless recommended by manufacturer. Ride your motorcycle or cars regularly since ethanol fuels perform better when they don't sit for a longer time. Now to conclude, so is E20 bad for your motorcycle or car? Not really. It's a step towards greener fuel and energy independence. Yes, you might lose a little mileage, but with proper maintenance and if your vehicle is E20 ready, there is nothing to panic about. If this video has cleared your doubts, hit the like button, share it with your riding group or car club and subscribe for more real world automotive insights and also let me know in the comment if you have experienced any change in the mileage with E20 fuel. Thank you for tuning into Arkeonics and I'll see you in the next one.